Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, it's Josh, and today I've got a real quick bag review to do with you. Um, I showed you this bag in my last video, which was my Travel Essentials, Travel Rider Dies, Must Haves, All Time Favorites video. Um, and after I showed that to you and pretty much gushed over how perfect this bag is, I got a ton of questions and comments and Instagram DMs about... Um, will I please tell you more about the bag, do a standalone video, show you all the things so that you guys can make a decision on whether you want to pick one up. And the reason I am I kind of rushed to do this video is because these bags, or this bag, has been officially discontinued by Briggs & Riley. So there is a new one that replaces this bag. It's very similar, but different in some very key ways. We'll talk about that at the end of this video. Um, so long story short, I wanted to come on and do this now so that you have as much time as you can have to, again, decide whether you want to pick one up, whether you want to give it a try. And right now, both colors are still available. So it's a great time, probably, you know, the best time to go pick one up, do it as soon as you make that decision, because I just don't know, again, how long you'll still be able to get this bag. So... With all that said, I have made a uh, list of notes of things I want to talk to you about. I actually went back um, and thought about and tried to figure out how long I've had this bag, how many trips it's been on, where it's gone, because this bag, when I say that this is a must-have, ride or die, absolute essential, you know, kind of piece of travel gear for me, it is, I mean, let me just go through this because you'll see how much travel I have done with this bag. And I just love it. I mean, this is, to me, this, I, there's not one thing I would change. And there aren't too many things I can say that about. So, <clears throat> let's just dive right into that. I purchased this bag in December of 2010 from Bloomingdale's in Los Angeles. Which means that this bag, like this specific bag, is 12 years old. Um, it has gone to Europe three times. It has gone to Asia once. South America twice. And those trips, those five trips, six trips, um, we're talking like two weeks or more, a month or more, um, dragged through every airport you can imagine, dragged through train stations, dragged through, you know, the streets <laughs> of all the cities, um, probably went on, you know, a few big jets to get there, and then also a few regional jets hopping around, you know, the continent and so forth. Um, it has also gone all over North America. I have taken it um, traveling like kind of quick regional hopping. So like LA to San Francisco, it has also gone, um, cross country. So, you know, like LA to New York, gone all over the Eastern seaboard, gone all over kind of the South and the, the Southwest, the Midwest. This bag has pretty much gone everywhere <laughs> that I have gone. And at this point in my life, I have gone, you know, quite a few places. Um, I think it has gone on over 300 plus individual flights as well. And the thing that I love most about this bag, the reason that it is such a ride or die for me, is that on every single one, and I'm not exaggerating here, on every single one of those airline trips that I've taken this bag on, it has fit in whatever compartment was at my seat for storage. So if I was in economy, it fit under the seat in front of me. If I was in business or first class, um, it has fit in every one of the like kind of footwell storages, or sometimes you've got like a cubby kind of thing to put your carry-on in. I don't know how they designed this or how they came up with the measurements or whatever, but whatever they did, I mean, it literally fits everywhere around the seat that you have storage. The other thing that makes these such an important piece in my travel repertoire, if you will, is that these are made with the best quality materials out there. And it's funny because at the time that I bought this, back in, again, 2010, so 12 years ago, Briggs & Riley was number two and Toomey was number one in both price and quality. But now when you put this 12-year-old this bag up against a more recent modern Toomey, this bag feels so much better than anything that you can get out there from Toomey today. What Briggs & Riley uses, for the most part, to make their bags is ballistic nylon. Very similar, again, to the kind of material that Toomey uses on more of their iconic bags. Ballistic nylon holds up, good quality ballistic nylon anyway, holds up to just about everything. It is abrasion resistant, it is tear resistant, um, and I have 
I have not babied this bag either. So I have stuffed this to the gills to the point where I was like, ooh, the zipper is probably going to pop halfway through, you know, halfway home. And still, the material, the quality of the zippers, the quality of all the trim, the rubber and, you know, leather that's used to craft the kind of like major kind of abrasion points, it's made so well that, again, I mean, I have not been able to even remotely damage this bag yet. The other thing I really like about this bag is, let me show you with this guy here. This one is empty right now, okay? So you can see, like, literally nothing is in here. And yet, let me move this to the side for a minute. You see how structured it is? Like, when you get a nylon bag, a lot of times it's it has a tendency, or they have tendencies to, like, kind of, you know, lose their structure, lose their shape, kind of fall in, and, you know, whatever else. When you've got this thing open, it holds its shape, and I love that about it. So it never looks sloppy. Like, there are a lot of duffel bags out there that, when they're not fully stuffed to capacity, they look really kind of dumpy. <laughs> um, and this is not one of those bags. This bag is tremendous. It holds its shape when it's empty, when you're traveling about. Um, you can even, again, like, even when you're carrying it, you know, with the hand carry handle, the front and sides are not collapsing in on themselves. I don't know how they did it, but they did it. And this is such a classic and um, understated, but still very... You can tell, I think, that this is a high-quality item when you see, you know, one of these being toted through the airport. So what I'm going to do now is I've told you all the things. I've told you why I love it. I've done the measurements. I'm going to flip the camera around. And I'm going to put this on the bed and I'm going to start filling it with my um, kind of unconventional idea to show you volume. Um, but then I've also got, I've got a MacBook, I've got an iPad and a wallet. And I'll show you how those fit in here as well. Okay, guys, here's the bag. As you can see, it is completely empty. Um, and it still, again, retains its structure absolutely beautifully. I love that about it. Um, but now let's fill it up. And to fill it up, I have, <laughs> this is kind of funny, I was trying to think about what I could use to just kind of fill the bag and give you all a good sense of how much it holds. And to me, like filling it with my stuff doesn't really give you any idea of that. Like it's not a universal measure is what I'm trying to say. So to my right here, I have a pile of like basic as can be Kirkland Costco water bottles. These I believe are like 16.9 ounces. And we're gonna fill the bag with these so that you can, if you really want to see how much volume fits in here, you can go to your grocery store and go pick up a pack of water and, uh, you know, arrange it the same way I've got here. And you'll see really what fits inside this bag. So let's get to that and start filling this bag with our Costco water. And here it is. So I was counting as I went along. I believe that there are 24 Kirkland water bottles in here. Again, these are the 16.9 fluid ounce size. And I mean, 24 of these water bottles in a bag that, like we just said, really not that big, um, fits under the seat in front of you. And even with this amount of number of bottles, I can very comfortably still zip the top of this thing shut. Um, I just love this bag so much. It's amazing. Okay, so now let me bring over a few more things. I've got um, a regular kind of bog standard continental wallet. This is my Chanel. I showed you this in my travel ride or die video as well. I have also got, um, this is an iPad, a very dirty, I apologize, um, iPad Pro 11 inch with the M1 chip. I don't know if that matters, but this is a bog standard uh, 11 inch iPad Pro. And then I've got a big 16-inch MacBook Pro. This is the one, this is the latest generation that brought back all the ports. And it's got sort of the, um, like, rounded edge here with the, the flat top. So this is a 16-inch um, big new MacBook. This fits in here as well. So we'll start with this and then I'll work my way down. Now, um, this is, as you can tell, this is a huge laptop. But it does fit, no problem right inside 
Um, if you wanted to put it in the case, you absolutely could do that and it would, would definitely still fit. Um, again, you can zip it over top. The only thing I would say with a laptop it being in here is um, I would definitely put it in a case and I would try to pack the bag so that I've got things to kind of keep it upright. This will fit down in the bottom of the bag, um, but I wouldn't do that because then you're loading everything on top and you're probably crushing your screen and things like that. So if I travel with my laptop when I'm using this bag, I just throw it in kind of like a basic sleeve of some sort and then kind of stand it up at the back because I'm going to have a bag or whatever else, um, you know, kind of in the main compartment here and it works perfectly fine. Um, so MacBook, and this again is the big daddy MacBook. Um, so if you have a 14 inch, a 13 inch, anything smaller will fit just fine. Now for iPad, um, uh, here's again, my iPad 11 inch iPad pro. This fits, as you can imagine, basically anywhere in this bag, you can put it inside, you can put it, um, you know, standing up against the side, standing up against the back. You can really do anything you want. What I usually do with my iPad, with this iPad though, is um, I will either put it, depending on what else and how else I'm packing, I will put it in the side compartment and it fits just fine like that um, in here. And what I like about that is I can have easy access to this. If the bag is like pushed like this, you know, under a seat or into a cubby, um, I can easily grab it right from the side. So I love that about it. Um, a 12.9 inch iPad Pro though will not fit, at least in this compartment. It'll fit in the main compartment. It may fit in the front compartment, but um, 11 inch or anything smaller than that will fit anywhere. Um, the other thing you can do though is you can take your iPad um, and stick it in the front here and that works perfectly as well. Um, so it fits just like so here. And then in the front, I usually also have my wallet. So I'll put this, there's a divider right here inside the compartment. So I'll have my iPad here in the back. I'll stick my big wallet in the front. And that again, works perfectly just like that. So yeah. Okay. Isn't that insane? I mean, 24 Costco water bottles, a 16 inch MacBook Pro, iPad in every compartment around the whole thing. Like it's just so practical for, you know, anyone who really cares about maximizing the amount of space that they have. This thing is just like, that is why I cannot and will not travel without this bag at my side. Um, cannot say enough about them. I just love them. Highly, highly recommend them. And if any of you are interested, I would highly urge you to go check it out and, you know, maybe even just buy one and you can return it if you don't like it, but get one in whatever color or both colors, if you want both colors, while you still can. Okay, so links down below for that. The last thing I want to talk to you all about in this video is I want to kind of explain the this bag being discontinued because I had some questions about that as well. So let me explain that. This bag, okay, this this particular bag and style has been updated the update, though, in my opinion, is a distinctly and specifically different bag than this. The new one is missing, or it seems like they have cut some corners around how the bag itself at its core, like at its kind of structural foundation, was engineered. When I saw the new one in person, I was frankly disappointed and kind of really irritated because when you see the new one in person, a lot of the things that I love about this bag, for example, the structure of it, okay? So like the way I said, this is empty, just like the black one, and you see how nicely it's sitting on the table. It's got its structure, looks like it could be full. When the new one is empty, it collapses. It like kind of just like, you know, heaps in on itself. It doesn't look good. I think that's because they cheaped out on some of the thickness of the materials, the piping around the sides and edges here. So kind of like the structure of this bag really is because of this piping and some of the reinforced corners on this bag. The new one is missing that, like entirely missing that. If you carried that thing half full, it would look horrid. I just <laughs> like, I, I think it would look absolutely horrid. Um, and before I came on to do this video, by the way, too, I looked online to see if there were any other reviews. And I'm going to put some screen grabs in the video here somewhere. Um, 
that basically from other people say exactly the same thing that I, or ha people who had the exact same feelings that I had when they saw the new version, because we all had the original version. So <laughs> take that as you will. So yeah, that is the Briggs and Riley baseline cabin duffel. Take my 12 years of experience. These are phenomenal bags you guys to have to own. If you have been on the hunt for a great underseat airplane carry-on bag, this is it. Look no further. Um, again, pick it up. Maybe, you know, just buy it so you have it. Give it a try. If you don't like it, you can return it. But at least you've got one before. Again, they may be the old model anyway, at least goes out of production and isn't available anymore. Um, I was so worried when I found out that the they were going away that I actually bought an extra black one. And then as I was like, literally, as I was thinking about doing this video, reading all the comments and questions from you guys and, you know, preparing to respond to them and tell you really how much I love the bags. I myself was like, you know, I love the black. Like this is my, my mainly used one. I like having the lighter color, um, you know, kind of to substitute in every now and again. But I was like, I, I think I want to have a backup of the khaki green here as well. So what did I do? I went on Amazon, I put my money where my mouth was, I have a, another one of these of the olive green or khaki green coming to me. It should be here actually today from Amazon. And then I will have a backup of the black and a backup of the uh, khaki. I am hoping that those four will last me for the rest of my life. And I know that that sounds dramatic to be saying that I don't ever want to have to buy another, you know, kind of airline cabin duffel in my life. but. I don't ever want to have to buy another airplane carry-on duffel in my life. So any other questions and comments that I haven't answered here that I that you might want an answer to, leave them down below. Email me. Email will be here on screen. Uh, you can message me on Instagram. Just get in contact. I will tell you everything you want to know. If there are enough questions that warrant another video, if I've missed something, I will absolutely and can absolutely do that later on. Um, this will be, I keep saying that I'm done with YouTube for 2022. This is it. I'm 